Hello and welcome to the MongoDB and Mongoose course. So this is about creating databases and models that we can use to store our data for our backend apps. And the first thing I'm just going to do is just start making a database cluster because it'll take a long time to do that and then I'll talk through this while that's happening. So just go to the MongoDB Atlas by clicking this link and then click sign in and you can either uh, register here or just log in with Google. So I'm just going to log in with Google. So yeah. So this always takes a while to update stuff. Okay, so once you log in for the first time, it'll ask you to create a cluster. So just click um, create a cluster. And you just want to get the free shared cluster, so this one. And then you can choose the type of cloud server you want. So I'm just going to go with Amazon and I'm going to put one of the European ones, but you should probably pick the ones near you. Um, these are all okay. Um, I'm just going to rename this maybe to like uh, free code camp. So that so I'll put the databases for it in this cluster. So a cluster is just basically a collection of databases. So then you just click uh, create cluster and it'll take a while to do it. So this one takes says it takes between one and three minutes. Usually it takes a little bit longer than that. So you just want to wait for this to happen in the background. Um, so what I'm also going to do is start setting up the, gl uh, the glitch project that we need to submit up application. So again you want to open up the github repository link using this one and then go to glitch.com and here you want to click new project and then import from github. Go back down here click code then copy it and click this again and just paste it in here and then press OK. And it will start creating our project and this will take a little bit of time. Um, I'm just going to give this maybe, no, it's still loading. So we'll come back to these. So these will just happen in the background. I'm just going to give this a quick description here. So I'm going to say uh, Mongo DB and Mongoose, just so I know what this is about. So that's running now and this one's running. So we're going to just have a look at what these are. So MongoDB is a database model, but it stores data in records such as rather than like these tables. So it means all the um, information associated with one record. So a record can be like, I don't know, a person or a book or just something that you would model in real life. And all the information is put together into one document rather than spread across different tables. And there's a few benefits to this. So the first one is that um, uh, they're scalable and the performance is quicker. Rather than looking at multiple tables, you don't have to like, you can just look at one area where all your information will be. Um, you can add, It's flexible, so you can add new stuff without the need to make a new table. So if you wanted to add like two phone numbers of one person, normally you'd have to create two phone number tables. And instead of doing that, you can just add an extra phone number to one person without having to add one for the rest of the other people, basically. Um, replication means that uh, if, like, there's copies kept of it. So it's not really exclusive to MongoDB, this, but this just means that your database is backed up. And MongoDB also uses JSON to store its data, and we've looked at JSON before. So this is probably the best... Um, thing to do when we're learning JavaScript. I'm just going to quickly check on these. Okay, so these are both ready now. Um, Mongoose is an NPM module that allows us to um, write objects into MongoDB like using JavaScript object syntax. So this is a lot easier rather than having to create all the records ourselves. And again, we're going to be writing our code on Glitch and then just sharing the live app link. So. Now that we've got our cluster, we need to start doing some stuff here so that we can start accessing our database. So we're up to here now. So what you want to do is go to um, database access and you want to, I'll just delete this one for now just to show you how it works. So you want to add a new database user and 
where it says authentication method, just put password. And here you just want to give some details. So I'm just going to go with user one. And um, I would just click auto generate secure password. And I would copy this somewhere. But I'm just going to show it here just for the purposes of this. I'll change this later. So what you want to do for now is just open up Notepad or um, text edit. And you want to just create a new document. And you just want to paste this in for now temporarily. Just so just leave it here for now. Because we'll need to come we'll need this back later. And um, the access level, I would just start with read and write to database. I wouldn't set it as admin for now. And then just click add user here. So we have our first user. Next thing we need to do is create the database. So go back to clusters and where it says collections, click on that and let this load up and it will take a while. Okay, so now we have nothing here at the moment. So we wanna create a database. So what we're gonna do here is just click add my own data and add a database name. So I'm just gonna put um, free code camp for now. Actually, I'll just call this DB1 just for simplicity. And a collection name, so a collection is basically like, I guess a table in a way. Um, we're going to be creating our own collections, but you still need to specify one for some reason because it says a collection name must be specified. So I'm just going to say collection one, but um, we can change this later. So we just want to click create here. So now we have our first database, which is this DB1 right here, and we have a collection which has like indexes and all of that stuff. Um, another thing we need to do is set to the IP address for database access. And so you just want to go to network access right here and you want to click, I'm going to delete this for now and show you how to do it from the start. So you just click add IP address and you can either add your own IP addresses in here or you can say allow access from anywhere. So this means that any IP address will work and you can also enter 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 to do this as well. Um, you can also set a time for when this will expire, but I'm just going to leave this for now and click confirm. And all of these changes that you commit to MongoDB take quite a while to apply. So you're going to have to just be patient while it sets everything up. So we've added a new user, we've whitelisted the IP or we've allowed access to all IPs. So the last thing to do is just um, get the connection ready. So you want to go back to clusters, you want to click connect here, and you want to click connect your application. The driver we're using is node since we're working with node. Just leave this as 3.6 or later. And you have this link right here. So you want to copy this like so. And just, I would for now just paste it into your text editor. So there's a few things that we have to do to this. So firstly, we need to add in our password in the correct location. So you want to copy the password. Again, I'll change this at some point because this is not very secure right now. And just paste it in here. So we have the user, the username should have been filled in by default, but the password doesn't get filled in. Um, another thing is the database name. So the database name isn't specified by default anymore, despite the fact that in the tutorial, it says that, um, the database names are filled out for you. That's not true for me anyway. So we need to put the database name in. And remember that um, my database name, if you go again to collections, the database I just created here is called DB1. So I just want to replace this right here with DB1 and save that. Oh, well, no, don't save it. Just leave it for now. So. Um, the final thing to do is get this URI. So this URI now has our database name right here, which is this thing um, right here. And then we also have our username, password, and our database name. So we have everything right now to connect to this. So Mongoose will then use this to connect. Um, what you want to do now is save this as an environment variable in your project. So you just want to go to .env right here and you just click add variable. And I'm just going to call this um, MongoDB or something like that. So I'll call it MongoDB URI, like this. And you want to just copy and paste this in. 
Um, it might take quite a while for this to actually be applied by glitch, because I've noticed glitch is actually really slow at um, adding variables in. Um, a way you can test that is if you just go into here and do console.log and then process.env.mongodb URI or whatever you save the environment variable as. Um, yeah, mongodb URI. But let's try running it just to test it. Um, if it doesn't work straight away, I would just wait maybe like a couple of hours and come back and try it. Um, otherwise, you might have to just start with um, putting it in as a string, although it's not very secure. The terminal's taking ages to load up as well. Um, okay, so you just want to try doing node um, myapp.js. Or maybe node server.js. Yeah, and as you can see, it's coming up as undefined for now. So these these environment variables will take absolutely ages usually to, so as you can see, it hasn't been scrubbed in a long time. This is just one of the annoying things about having to use Glitch. So if you can't wait um, for this to be applied, what you can just do for now is maybe put something like um, let URI equals, and then just put this as a string for now, and then just use this. Um, that's a temporary solution. But regardless, we have the URI now for our connection, so we're ready to get started with these challenges.